Hello, this is Topics in Thoracic Anesthesiology, and I'm Dr. Karen Seibert, Clinical Professor of Anesthesiology at UCLA. Today's question is why you would ever bother to use a right-sided double lumen endobronchial tube. In this segment, we're going to talk about the absolute indications for a right double lumen tube, the hazards of using a left double lumen tube or a left bronchial blocker in left side lung resection or pneumonectomy, how to place a right double lumen tube, and how a right double lumen tube can make your life easier. We'll touch briefly on the pros and cons of bronchial blockers. And finally, we'll mention when to use a left double lumen tube for a left side thoracic procedure. There are reasons why the different left and right sided tubes exist, which we'll get to in a moment. These tubes are different because there are three lobes in the right lung and only two on the left. The right upper lobe takeoff is very close to the main carina, so the right double lumen tube has to have a separate lumen to allow you to ventilate the right upper lobe. You can see where that lumen is, where the red arrow is pointing. The distal lumen leads to the right bronchus intermedius. Here is a photo from a case where we absolutely had to use a right double lumen tube. This is a malignant mucoepidermoid carcinoma in the left main stem bronchus, very close to the carina. You can see the blue endobronchial balloon at the right edge of the photo. Anytime a left bronchial sleeve resection is planned, it's best to use a right double lumen tube. There's probably not going to be room in the bronchus for a left double lumen tube or a left bronchial blocker. In addition, it's definitely safer to use a right double lumen tube for a left pneumonectomy. This is a case report that was published a few years ago. The patient needed a left pneumonectomy and a left double lumen tube was placed. However, when the surgeon stapled across the bronchus, guess what? They stapled right across the tube and severed it. The case was a huge, slow-growing, but malignant fibrosarcoma. You can see how the trachea is pushed to the right by tumor compression, and you can barely see the left main stem bronchus. It wouldn't even have occurred to me to put in a left double lumen tube for this case, but they did, and that's what happened. Now, stapling across the tube wasn't so bad because it was instantly recognized in that case and not that hard to fix. However, there was a case a few years ago in Los Angeles here at another hospital where the surgeon caught the left double lumen tube with just one or two staples and no one realized it had happened. When the patient was extubated at the end of the case, the trachea was badly torn and the patient ultimately died. So remember, if you don't have anything in the bronchus, an endobronchial tube, a bronchial blocker, a suction catheter, whatever, the surgeon can't staple across it. If that happens, it's 100% an iatrogenic complication, and for once, it really would be anesthesia's fault. Now, here's the question. How can a right double lumen tube make your life easier when some people argue that they're so hard to position? Well, let's consider what happens when you put in a left-sided double lumen tube for a right-side lung resection or pneumonectomy. At the left, you can see how the tube looks when the patient is in the supine position. At the right, you see how the tube looks when the patient is turned to the left lateral position. The tube is pointing down into the left main stem bronchus. The tracheal lumen is superior, and all it has to do is let the right lung deflate, which it can do very well. Life is good. Now, let's look at the situation where you're trying to do a left lung resection with a left-sided double lumen tube. Again, on the left, you see the tube positioned in the supine patient going down into the left main stem bronchus. But when you turn the patient into the right lateral position with the left side up, now what happens? The tube is pointing up into the operative lung. Anytime the surgeon pushes down or manipulates the lung, it can move or even dislodge your tube. You're trying to ventilate the right lung through the tracheal lumen, which is now posterior or dependent and can easily be squashed anytime the surgeon pushes down on the operated lung. And there's one more problem here. If you happen to tear the tracheal cuff on the molars, which is easy to do, now you really have a problem because that cuff has to be intact or you can't ventilate the right lung. 
when you use an opposite sided tube, it doesn't matter if the tracheal cuff is intact or not, because the bronchial cuff is all you need for lung isolation. So in summary, these are the advantages of using an opposite sided tube for lung surgery. A tube positioned up in the operative lung bronchus is inherently unstable. The surgeon can easily dislodge it while manipulating the operated lung. This is probably an underrecognized cause of hypoxemia and problems with lung isolation during one lung ventilation. A tube positioned down in the ventilated lung bronchus tends to stay put and rarely needs adjustment. What is the easiest way to position a right double lumen tube? It's really not that hard. First, while the patient is supine, insert the tube and confirm that it's down in the right main stem bronchus. Then position the patient in the lateral flexed position ready for surgery. There is no point in trying to position the tube until the patient is in the lateral flexed position because the tube will move and you'll just have to position it all over again. So look down the tracheal lumen first as we're doing here and make sure that the bronchial cleft is just visible at the main carina. This confirms that the tube is at the appropriate depth. Then look down the bronchial lumen. Right double lumen tubes have either one or two white lines that point directly to the right upper lobe orifice. This helps you locate the opening and makes life easier in case fogging or secretions are interfering with your view. Look for shadow and striations that indicate the right upper lobe bronchus. Now, if all you see is bright pink, then just rotate the tube either anterior or posterior. The bronchus will come into view. Avoid the temptation to start moving the tube at random. You already established that, that the depth is appropriate, so just rotate the tube anterior or posterior to find the bronchial opening. It's really not that hard. If the patient had abnormal anatomy, you would know that already from all the pre-op imaging. What is the value of bronchial blockers? Here is one area where opinions vary. As we already noted, you can't use them for a sleeve resection and there's hazard in using them for pneumonectomy, but some people swear by them. Some surgeons dislike them because they feel that the lung deflates too slowly and that the blockers can be easily plugged with secretions. But in some situations, they can be useful. Here for reference is a table that lists the pros and cons of double lumen tubes versus bronchial blockers, courtesy of Dr. Jay Brodsky. There are limited situations in my practice where a left-sided double lumen tube makes life easier. If you're doing a procedure where you need to deflate both the right and left lungs sequentially, as in a bilateral sympathectomy, then you might as well use a left double lumen tube. If you're doing a left chest procedure for access to the distal esophagus, for example, a large hiatal hernia or a diaphragmatic hernia repair, and the surgeon is going to do intraoperative EGD, it will be easier to use a left double lumen tube. The process of putting the EGD scope in and out will inevitably move the tube to some degree, and it will be easier to reposition if you use a left-sided tube. So in summary, don't hesitate to use right double lumen tubes. It's not that hard to learn, and they're more stable than you might think. Anything you ever learn gets easier the more you practice doing it. Here are some selected references for future reading. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch.